So then, in this video, it's time to answer the age-old question. Is it possible to sleep in a lift shaft? Because let's face it, if you're out and about and you're really tired and need somewhere to sleep, hotels are so bloody expensive nowadays when a lovely lift shaft is nice and warm and cosy and there's a lot of lift shafts about and it's free. The perfect place to sleep. Or is it? In this video, I'm going to be taking a look over my previous attempts to sleep in lift shafts. But before that, let's first take a look at a new attempt I did at trying to sleep in a lift shaft. This is new, unseen before footage on YouTube. Let's take a look at my latest attempt. This is on a cone base model lift. Now, these cone base models, so I see MX-06, some but not all of the MX-10s, also the NMX-07 and some but not all of the NMX-11 lifts have the base model cab with no chassis, making a beautiful flat car top to fall asleep on. Isn't that nice? Well, no, it's not. It's actually bloody dangerous. Now, for the lift to move in the night while I'm asleep would be incredibly dangerous. Because if you look here how I'm lying on top of the lift, you can see that my legs are sort of bent and I'm sort of slightly curled up to fit on top of the lift. Because you're never going to get a lift that's that big chassis list, or that big lift so you have to have chassis. So when you actually fall asleep and you go into a deep sleep, you often move in the night, especially if you're in an unfamiliar location, especially if you're a bit uncomfortable, such as the hard surface of the car top of the lift. Now, as my legs are all bent up, if I fell into a deep sleep, most likely I'd move in the night and make my legs go more straight basically making my feet go over the edge of the lift. That would be very dangerous because if the lift moved in the night, I could get caught up in the side of the lift and that would crush me. That is very dangerous. It'd be absolutely stupid to try and sleep on top of a lift that's actually in service. Now, to actually disable a lift by putting onto inspection, then going to sleep on top of it would also be pretty stupid because you're just drawing attention and people would notice the lift not working. But I managed to find a lift that was already out of service when I found it. So, as this lift was already out of service, we put some A4 paper stuck across the lift door saying out of service. Well, this lift's not meant to be moving anyway. So surely that's perfect. I can go to sleep on top of it, can't I? No. This was actually a very bad idea of mine because as the lift was already out of service, an engineer had already been called out. And while I was lying on top of this lift, I actually didn't go fully deeply asleep, but I did start to doze off and went into a light sleep. And even though I'd put a lift onto emergency stop and car top inspection, thinking a lift would not move, there's one major thing I overlooked. It can still be moved from the cabinet. A lift can still be free fall, so a brake could be released and under gravity, the lift could move upwards. And as well as that, an engineer could just pull out wires, bypass everything, and then run it from cabinet inspection. Even though no Normally, if you've got car top inspection in, most models of lift won't allow the lift to run on cabinet inspection. An engineer can easily just pull out wires wondering, why is this lift not moving? Pull out a few wires, bypass everything, then make it move. And that is exactly what happened. I was half asleep on top of this lift, then I suddenly heard the cabinet open. I bolted up awake. Then the lift started moving. An engineer overrode the safety circuit, overrode the car top inspection, and started driving a lift from cabinet inspection. I could have been fast asleep in a deep sleep. I could have rolled in the night and moved my arm over to the edge of a lift. That could have crushed me. That was incredibly dangerous. I don't know why I did this. That was stupid. And then when the engineer opened the doors, he looked very shocked to find me half asleep on top of the lift. So that was a failed attempt. Let's take a look at some of my previous attempts to sleep on top of lifts. Another attempt I did many years ago was to sleep in a lift pit. This was actually on some abandoned lifts. And sleeping in a lift pit, well, if the lift's completely abandoned, the lift's not going to move. So that's a good place to sleep. Well, not really. Lift pits are absolutely disgusting. On lifts when they're in service, people drop all sorts of stuff down the gap in between the lift doors. Often you'll find needles in a lift pit. Often you'll find the most disgusting things you could ever imagine in a lift pit. This lift pit was incredibly dusty and dirty. I did not get to sleep very much at all because the floor was very hard. Then as I had the shaft lights on, this was in the car park and the car park security were patrolling the car park. They noticed the lights were on in the lift shaft and that drew their attention to me. So that didn't work out very well. Also, if this was an active lift, sleeping in a lift pit would be far too dangerous because of the risk of someone dropping something down between the lift doors and it hitting you in the night. Let's take a look at another option, sleeping on top of a car lift. Now I did this quite recently. I had a hammock, which was actually a very good choice because a hammock is very lightweight, but you can stretch it out and it becomes comfy. And it's better than actually bringing a mattress because a mattress, even though it's comfy, the amount of weight you're having to lug around to do that, you won't be able to. But a hammock can be perfect. The only problem with a hammock is that usually you need an under quilt and an over quilt to stay warm. So that's an extra quilt that goes outside of the hammock so it doesn't compress when you lie in the hammock and that keeps you warm on the outside. Plus also an over quilt that keeps you warm that goes on top of you when you're in the hammock. Still quite a bit of weight, but but as lift shafts are quite warm, you won't need as much insulation when you're sleeping in a lift shaft compared to sleeping in the woods. So sleeping on top of a car lift 
is actually quite a good idea. You need to find a lift big enough, which this one is, a right distance between the two attachment points to tie the hammock up. Notice I'm tying the hammock to the handrails of the lift. I'm not tying it to the lift tracks because that would be too dangerous because if somehow the lift did move in night and my hammock's tied to lift tracks, that could also crush me, which is why I tied the hammock to the handrails. Now, this lift was actually out of service. The inspection control was in pieces where the engineers had unscrewed a load of parts out of it. This meant the engineers were going to come back to finish off their work fixing the lift. But as the next day was a Sunday, it's very unlikely the engineers would actually turn up on a Sunday. Plus, as well as that, I stuck something in the door rollers of the lift, so even if an engineer did turn up, they wouldn't even be able to open up the lift doors. So this was actually pretty good, a nice safe place to sleep. Except coming across a car lift, which is currently out of service because it's being repaired, is not that common of a thing. So even though it worked out on this one particular time, this is not exactly something you're going to come across that often. So looking for car lifts as somewhere to sleep isn't really a good solution because you're most likely not going to find one. So let's now take a look at another option. What about sleeping in a motorhome? Well, motor rooms are nice and warm, but the main problem is you're sleeping on the hard floor, which is not very good. Also, motor rooms are very dusty. There's also a risk of an engineer or a maintenance person coming in the motor room. And also, every time a lift moves, it wakes you up because it's very noisy. So sleeping in a motor room is not really that good of an option. So let's now take a look at another option. Another option is sleeping in an abandoned lift. Not in the lift shaft, but in the lift itself. Because if the lift is fully abandoned, it could actually be a very nice place to sleep. Unlike a lift shaft, it's not going to be really dusty. Inside of a lift, not much dust really gets in. If the lift's actually been abandoned, but it's not in a really bad state, it's still in quite a good state, such as this particular lift, that's actually quite a good place to sleep. Sadly, there's no attachment points for a hammock though, meaning you'd actually have to bring an actual mattress to sleep on because sleeping on the hard floor would not be nice. So that does mean you'd have to lug around a mattress with you. Plus an abandoned lift, unlike an active lift, which is nice and warm, an abandoned lift is very cold. As you have to bring a mattress with you, well, I'm not going to be lugging around mattresses on the train, meaning I'd only really bring a mattress with me if I was travelling by car. Then I might as well just go and sleep in my car. In fact, I've actually made a wooden car bed. This is because the, most cars don't exactly go completely flat. Rolling back the seats, they won't go completely flat. Generally speaking, they're not really designed for someone to sleep in. Now, you could get a van, but vans are very bad on fuel. They cost a lot of money to run. So just a regular car, how can you sleep in it? Well, you simply make a wooden bed. I've made it in two pieces. So I fold down all of the seats. One piece goes in between the front and back seats and makes that bit flat. The second piece goes in the boot and makes that bit flat. Now, the whole bed is at a slope, meaning I have to have my car in around a 10% slope with the front pointing downwards. So if the car's in that downward slope, it then makes the bed go flat, meaning it does take quite a bit of time to find a parking spot for me to be able to sleep in the car but it does work pretty well in summer in winter I guess it can work if you leave the engine running, but that's going to use up a load of fuel. With the engine just idling for an entire night, that uses about 10 pounds of fuel. But the whole point of sleeping roughs is to save money and leaving the engine running, not that cost effective when I might as well spend that money to actually sleep in a hostel. Another option is hammocking in the woods. Now, this is what I did in Germany. It was quite a bit of effort, even though the hammock is nice and light. I had to also bring a sleeping bag as the overquilt, and I had to also bring an underquilt, meaning that the bags I was lugging around with me around Germany when I was sleeping in the woods were incredibly heavy. Sleeping in the woods worked well, but only in the summertime. And on one time, it did rain. And when it rained, all of the hotels were also booked up, and I couldn't find anywhere to sleep. So I ended up sleeping in the Hauptbahnhof alongside all the homeless people. So then, the final option we're going to talk about in this video is sleeping in an abandoned building. Now, I've had very mixed results on this. I've actually slept in a lot of abandoned buildings, from fairly rough buildings to other buildings where one of my friends has pretty much claimed the building and slept in it for over a month. So there's very mixed results on how secure sleeping in an abandoned building is. Sometimes it could be very nice and it just feels like your own personal building and you just sleep there and no one's going to come in. Other times, you think you've got a whole building to yourself and some one comes in in the night and that is scary because you don't know who they are you don't know what their intentions are it's very disconcerting and i certainly wouldn't want to sleep in a abandoned building when there's someone else in the building who i don't know who they are so conclusion when you're out and about and you're trying to find somewhere to sleep without paying for hotels there are options out there none of them are particularly ideal in summertime, your options are a lot better in wintertime when your options are very limited. But most importantly, always stay safe and don't sleep in lift shafts on active lifts, even if the lift's out of service, because it can go badly wrong.
Good night, you guys.